Greetings once again. You are welcome to my channel, DR Flamingo LL Lawson. Today, we want to look at a physics topic, moment of forces. But before we do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, share, and interact with us in the comment section. Thank you. Now, moment of forces. That is moment of forces here. Now, this topic is a problem for most students. And I think the problem has to do with the forces to go with in the clockwise direction or the forces to go with during the anti-clockwise direction or anti-clockwise moment. Okay. Today, I'm going to give you the key to unlock the secrets behind this moment of forces calculation. So, let's go. Now, before we start, let's see what moment of forces. I think that's the first thing. You first have to understand the concept before you touch the calculation. Now, the moment of a force about a point is defined as the product of the force and its perpendicular distance from that point. So the product of the force and its perpendicular distance from that point. That is what we call moments of forces. Let me test my markers here. Okay. So the SI unit for moment is Newton meter. Why? Force is in Newton and distance is in meter. The principle of moment is that when a beam is in equilibrium under the action of several forces, the sum of the forces or the sum of the clockwise moments of, of all the forces about the point is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments of all the forces about that point. That is the principle of moment. Now, what are the conditions necessary for forces to be in equilibrium? That's balance. The sum of the upward forces should be what the sum of the downward forces, if you have this, and you want something to balance. Those forces pointing up should be what the forces pointing down. That is what we mean by number one. Number two, the sum of the clockwise moments should be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. So before I go to my question, I want us to look at the definition once again. The moment of a force about a point is defined as the product of the force. There's a key word. And its perpendicular distance from that point. In fact, this key word controls everything in my calculation. That is the secret. Number one secret. You'll see the other secrets when we go on. The product of the force and its perpendicular distance from that point. Full stop. Good. Please, let's look at our diagram here. Consider the diagram we have here. As you can see. Good. There is a beam. And there is a pivot. Or the fulcrum. Now these are forces. F1, F2. Downward forces. F4, F3. Now when you move this way. That is anti-clockwise direction. You see. Anti-clockwise. And clockwise. You see that? Okay. Now there is anti-clockwise direction. And there is clockwise. You check the clock. The clock moves this way. You see? That's clockwise. If the clock decides to go in a reverse direction, that is anti. Now there's a problem with students. Okay, the student will tell you, okay, Mingo, I know I'm going and I'm going clockwise. Then it's okay. So which forces will I pick? Uh, okay, then I feel like picking this. I also pick this one again, I'm confused. So I don't know whether to add F3. Good. Now there's a simple trick here. And the trick lies in the definition you see there. Now let's watch something here. Good. Let's look at the clockwise moment. Clockwise moment. Good. So I'm going this way. That's clockwise. Right, this one stretches, it stretches, right? Good. So I'm going this way, that's clockwise. This way. Good. Now there is F1. So my first force I see here is F1. The perpendicular distance, as I said, from that point, there's a fulcrum, a pivot here, is X1. That's my first force. Now the sum of the forces. Now, as you know my second force, 
Yes, a student may rationalize and say, yes, F2 by a distance X2. Uh, so something is not going well here. Why am I saying that? Let's look at it again. Moment is defined as the product of the force and its perpendicular distance from that point. That is the point of what? Action. That is the fulcrum. Now, you have this force and this is your distance to the point of action. Good, that is it here. Now look at this F2. If F2 should really be part of clockwise, let's check something. Then it should be F2. And it should have a direction like that. Watch. The F2 should have a direction going like that. Because clockwise, you are going this way. So how come you pick F2 and you are, you are, you are now going back? And you are still calling it a clockwise moment? That is not true. So if you have picked the direction like this, all forces in this direction should be going like that. So if F2 comes this way, then you'll be getting F2 in this distance, right? And watch, F2 can go this way. Good. Somebody will just say, okay, sir, F2 can go this way for us. Let's see. If F2 can go this way for us, that's very true. But there is something about this F2. It has no moment. Moment is defined as the product of the force and the perpendicular distance to the line of action. Now, there is a force. That is true. Where is the distance to my line of action here? So this force here has no moment for clockwise moments. So it can't be part. Because when you are going this way, there is no distance here. Good. It tells you that F2 is not part of my clockwise moments. So let's try it. See? You see, I get to F3. You can see F3 before the direction for me. Good. So F3, X3. Wow. That's the secret. That is all. If you can understand this, you can solve all moments of forces question. Let me go again. Clockwise moments. I want to go this direction. So there is my F1. The distance to the line of action is X1. That is in here. Good. I met this force here. I'm tempted to believe that this force is also part of my clockwise moment. But let's go. If I'm going this way, I should continue my movement. So if F2 is to move this way, it means F2 will not get a direction. There is a line of action. And where are you going? It means F2 is a force. Yes, that is very true. It has no moment. Good. And if you want to also go this way, then you can't count it as a clockwise moment. Go clockwise, we are going this way. Why are you going back? So it means you start from F1, the next force you meet, which will favor your clockwise moment, is F3. So that is why I have F3. And the distance to the line of action. Good. <laughs> you want to add X, uh, F4, right? Okay, let's go. Let's see. You want to add F4. See, this F4. F4 is going, where distance is here? Good, it tells that these are the clockwise moments. Now let's look at the anti-clockwise moments. That is all. So that is why some students have been struggling ever since. Let's go again. Anti-clockwise moments. Now you believe this is anti. Look at the direction, anti. Good. Now, F2 is part of anti. There's my fourth line of action. Good. So I have F2, X2. I need F1. It's not qualified to be anti. If it's qualified, let's watch. If F1 should be going this way, there is no distance to the line of action. The line of action is even behind. And you want to move this way. It's not going to work. So F2 has no. Now there's F4. Look at it. Look at it. Look at the direction, right? It means F4 will have a force and a distance to the line of action. Good. That is why I have F4, X4. If you understand just this concept, your troubles are over. But we will take a question and let's see how we can apply all these things. So look at it. All is very clear now. So remember, clockwise direction. The clockwise direction. The reason why F2 was not included in clockwise is that although we are all going this way and this one has the ability to also move in the same direction, it has no distance to the line of action. There's a line of action. So is this way to this force, this F3, to my line of action? Now, anti-clockwise is this force. This is not qualified to be anti-clockwise. Because if it is to move this way, where is the distance to the so-called line of action here? It has no moments in the anti-clockwise. So listen, it has a movement in the clockwise direction, but it has no movement in the anti-clockwise. So the next force I meet is what? This. Now let's look at the major question that we want to consider. Good. Okay, 
So there is a question. 